I know, I know. I really, really need a haircut. Hey everybody, I'm here with the Elgu Neptune 3 Plus, a large format direct drive 3D printer from our friends at Elgu. But I really don't want to talk about this 3D printer right now. Zach Friedman in one of his videos said something funny because he is a funny guy. What he said was as he was reviewing things that had been sent to him, that you shouldn't trust his opinion because he didn't pay for them and therefore his opinion is compromised. Now in the comments and responses to that video, there were people who were like, yeah, finally a reviewer who understands. And I want to address that real quickly. The idea that you can't trust a reviewer who didn't pay for the machine themselves. Now, admittedly, I didn't pay for many of the 3D printers that I have, but does that invalidate my opinion about them? Is it possible that a reviewer could still have a uncompromised opinion of a machine, even if they didn't pay for it themselves? Well, on the flip side, can you trust somebody who did pay for their 3D printer? Think about it for just one second. Have you ever overpaid for something? I've seen people who have overpaid for something, something in my opinion that they overpaid for, who respond in a way that, well, really I wouldn't have expected. They double down and say, I didn't make a bad decision. You made a bad decision. What I got was an experience and, and that you just can't put a price tag on. And Okay, that's fine, but I thought you were buying a product, something that would do something for you, not something that would give you a weekend of trying to make it work. Alternatively, I've seen people go the opposite direction too far and say, well, if this was an overpriced piece of crap, then they're all overpriced pieces of crap and nobody should buy any of them and just be down on everything related to that one perhaps overpriced purchase. Now on the other end of things, if you underpay for something, that is to say get a really good deal, I haven't seen many people who are upset about that or perhaps overzealous about that. Maybe a little bit overzealous, but generally speaking, underpaying for something or getting a good deal generally leads to a good response. But you can't necessarily trust somebody who overpaid for something and still says that it's good. If you get a good review from somebody, I guess what I'm saying is you can't trust them whether they paid for it or not. Editing room Joe jumping in here with a thought that I had during this with a shirt that is making my green screen weep. But I had a thought while I was putting this together that when people say that they want reviewers to buy every piece of equipment that they review, I understand what they're saying. They're saying they want them to have that aspect of the experience, but either you're going to have somebody who can only buy one or maybe two pieces of equipment and, and really can't afford to buy any more of that because they're living in a similar life circumstance than you and, and definitely me, or they're saying that they want to listen to the opinion of extremely affluent people who are not in the same life circumstances as themselves. I mean, I'm putting this together with just bare bones stuff so that I can, I can get it out to you guys. But yeah, I'm, I'm not, I could not buy all of the equipment that I do. And, and if somebody can, do they represent you? I don't know. Just a different thought that I had. That said, if you want to help me out in this crusade to tell the world about 3D printing more, well, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. But, but that's not the point of this. Just throwing it out there. All right, back to the video. Now, as for me, I want to give you as honest an opinion of the things that I review as possible. But how could I do that if I'm not in the same circumstance you are? Well, I've made a spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet takes every 3D printer that I've reviewed and gives it a score in capability, in ease of use, and in price. Now, I have had to be a little bit tricky with the price score. Of course, a lower price means a higher price score and a higher price means a lower price score, but it's not a linear scale. This is because if it were a linear scale, it wouldn't fairly and adequately describe the difficulty of 
adding a new system into an already existing system. A 3D printer that does more has more interactions between all the different parts and therefore more ways that it could go wrong. That means it needs more research and development as well as better systems overall. So when I made my chart, I knew that I needed to curve my price score, but I wasn't 100% sure which way I needed to curve it. So I experimented with it. And when I curved it too much in one direction, all the cheap printers were at the top of the list, no matter if they were good or bad. If they were cheap, they were top tier. But when I curved it the other direction, kind of suppressing the price score for cheaper 3D printers, things started to spread out in a way that for me, felt like it made a lot of sense. In fact, I had to go back and curve it even more after, again, cheaper printers just kept on shooting up to the top just by virtue of being cheap. But at this point, I feel like the spread is pretty good. Granted, my spreadsheet isn't perfect. I think that the FlashForge Adventurer 3 is an amazing 3D printer and well deserving of a high recommendation, but it isn't super high on the chart. Nevertheless, I think that this chart gives a good indication of where things should go. And you can check this chart out with the link in the description. Heck, you can even make a copy of it in your own Google Sheets and add your own 3D printers. Play with it yourself. If you don't agree with me, well, try it out yourself and see if you can figure out something that you do trust. And I guess that's the moral of this story. Should you trust people who have bought every piece of equipment that they review? Probably not. Should you trust people who haven't? Probably not. Who should you trust? Well, you should trust you. And you should do some research yourself, figure things out yourself, and, and then just trust yourself to make a good decision and go with it. Sure, you're not gonna get it right every time. Nobody's perfect but you'll do better by doing something than by doing nothing. So let's use the Elgu Neptune 3 Plus as an example for this discussion. When I got this 3D printer, was I super excited to get it? Well, no, I mean, yes, it's a large format direct drive 3D printer, but I already had one of those and I had one that does two independent extruders in IDEX. So, why would I be excited about only one extruder? But this machine is considerably cheaper than the JG Maker Artist D that I already had. And yes, it's large format does enable me to make things that could fit on my head if I had built it properly. Ah. So instead of trusting my opinion, I punched the numbers into the spreadsheet. And when I punched the numbers into the spreadsheet, this machine came out to be a high B 3D printer. Fairly good, especially for the price. And there are a lot of things about this machine that I like and that I don't like. For one, I, I really do enjoy this user interface. I love having it on a little tether and being able to pick it up and use it and put it back. I love a touchscreen interface and I love that if you mess it up, it's, it's super fragile and keeps resetting when the wire gets jiggled, but you know what? It doesn't interrupt the print when that happens. So that actually is, is super good. They, they had a new system. They made sure it played nice with the rest of the systems. You see what I'm talking about there, but it does have six leveling knobs, which make it super complicated, but then it also has bed level compensation so you can level it as best you can and it will make up the difference which overall led to me being able to make pretty good prints it also has filament run out detection but the filament run out detection is here when the direct drive is down here which means every time that your print runs out you're going to have about two feet of filament that is just going to be kind of wasted which honestly isn't that much but if they had put the filament sensor closer to the nozzle, that could have been a lot less. Also, I ran into a problem when I printed my big helmet. It was a two-day print to get that done, even with bucket mode printing, like vase mode, but upside down. And I noticed that the wheels on the Y-axis were starting to wear down a little bit. They were flaking off and putting little black flakes all over my printer and all over my print and all over my print area. 
These wheels, I don't know what's wrong with them. Maybe they're just not strong enough, not, not good enough. Maybe they're just cheap. But I replaced them with some wheels that I had that were better. Now, I also might have over-tightened it, but when I had it less tight, the eccentric nut not as tight, the whole head wiggled around. I had to tighten it down to get the head to wiggle. I feel like if they had taken the Y-axis and given it linear rods instead of these V-slot wheels, that the overall build would have been much, much better, and this would have gotten a much higher recommendation from me. But overall, I kind of trust where it falls in the spreadsheet. High B, not the best, but really, really good, especially for the price, especially for the feature set that it provides. But what do you think? Can you trust people who review things that got them for free? Can you trust people who paid for them? And what do you think of the spreadsheet that I've made? And check it out. Is there anything in it that you think could be improved? You can tell me about it in the comments or jump on my Discord. We got a lot of people there who already know about the spreadsheet and are enjoying checking it out. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Extra special thanks to my Patreon backers. And I want you to remember that you're a child of God and you're special. So take care of yourself and if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.